Now speaking, Rick Gonzalez, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer. Good morning everyone, thank you for joining us today. ADVI is making great progress in 2023 with the U.S. Humira biosimilar impact playing out as projected and slightly better than our planning assumptions. We have exceeded our guidance in the second quarter with the overachievement predominantly driven by our growth platform, excluding Humira. This platform demonstrated operational revenue growth of nearly 8% this quarter with growth expected to further accelerate in the second half of this year. We are also raising our full-year revenue guidance by $1 billion, on top of the $400 million sales increase we delivered in the first quarter for a total overachievement of $1.4 billion. Additionally, we are making good progress with our pipeline, across all stages of development, including recent strong data for Skyrise and ulcerative colitis, U.S. approvals for Rinvoke and Crohn's disease and Epkinley and Relapsed or Refractory DLBCL. This strong momentum and execution reinforces our confidence in our ability to return to robust growth in 2025 with high single-digit compounded growth rate to the end of the decade. Now speaking, Rob Michael, Vice Chairman and President. AbVi delivered excellent results this quarter, with adjusted earnings per share of $2.91, which is $0.11 cents above the guidance midpoint. Total net revenues were nearly $13.9 billion, more than $350 million ahead of the guidance. Skyrise and Rinvoke, two immunology therapies, are demonstrating impressive growth with sales for both up more than 50% versus the prior year. These two agents have achieved differentiated clinical profiles, including head-to-head -head data versus Humira and other novel therapies. U.S. Humira is also performing well, with erosion coming in better than expectations due to volume. Neuroscience is another area that is outperforming expectations, with the portfolio on pace to add more than $1 billion of incremental revenue this year. Aesthetics is delivering positive growth, driven by strong international performance and stabilizing trends in the U.S. given the strong and balanced performance across the diverse portfolio. Advi is raising its full-year adjusted earnings per share guidance by $0.23 cents and now expects adjusted earnings per share between $10.90 and $11.10. Now speaking, Jeff Stewart, Executive Vice President, Chief Commercial Officer. Thank you, Rob. Our quarterly earnings call is a great opportunity to review the performance of our therapeutic portfolio. Immunology delivered total revenues of $6.8 billion, exceeding expectations. Skyrise continues to perform exceptionally well with global sales of approximately $1.9 billion and strong operational growth of 51%. Skyrise has achieved a total prescription share of 32% in the U.S. biologic market, double the share of the next closest biologic therapy. Skyrise is also capturing roughly one out of two every in-play patient, which are either new to therapy or switching. We are confident in Skyrise's long-term potential with robust sales growth expected through the early part of the next decade. In IBD, Skyrise has demonstrated a very compelling clinical profile, including strong endoscopic data paired with convenient dosing. Uptake in Crohn's disease has been rapid, with total in-play patient share of approximately 25% in the U.S., roughly at parity leadership with Stellara. We anticipate approval and commercialization of Skyrise and ulcerative colitis next year. Rinvoke delivered global sales of $918 million, reflecting operational growth of nearly 57%. Rinvoke is now approved across seven distinct indications, including four in rheumatology, two in IBD as well as atopic dermatitis. It is the only potent daily oral medication with compelling head-to-head -head data against multiple novel therapies, including superiority to Humira in RA and Dupixin in AD. We have established strong and broad commercial access for each of the core diseases with formulary coverage for Crohn's expected to ramp quickly over the next months. Global Humira sales were $4 billion, down 24.8% on an operational basis due to biosimilar competition. Imbruvica's global revenues were $907 million, down 20.8%, consistent with our expectations. Venclexta global sales were $571 million, up 15% on an operational basis with strong demand for both CLL and AML. Vrailar continues to exceed our expectations with sales of $658 million, up 33.9% on an operational basis. Our oral CGRP portfolio contributed $292 million in combined sales this quarter reflecting growth of more than 30%. Total Botox therapeutic sales were $748 million, up 11.3% on an operational basis. We are pleased with the performance and execution across the therapeutic portfolio with growth expected to accelerate through the second half of the year. Now speaking, Carrie Strom, Senior Vice President, Advi, and President, Global Allergan Aesthetics. Second quarter global aesthetic sales were approximately $1.4 billion, up 2.9% on an operational basis. U.S. aesthetic sales were $829 million, down 6.2%. U.S. Botox cosmetic sales were $420 million, a decline of 6.5% versus the prior year. 
U.S. Juvederm sales were $125 million, down 14.5% on a year-over-year basis. The U.S. filler market declined approximately 20% in the quarter on a year-over-year basis due to the persistent inflationary environment. International aesthetics portfolio continues to perform exceptionally well with strong results in many key markets. Second quarter sales were $555 million, reflecting operational growth of nearly 20%. International Botox Cosmetics sales of $265 million increased approximately 14% on an operational basis and International Juvederm sales were $243 million, up approximately 28% on an operational basis. Economic metrics that we track for the U.S. have largely stabilized and consumer market research shows a meaningful recovery from last summer. We expect growth rates for the U.S. facial injectables to improve in the second half of this year. We continue to invest to drive future growth for our aesthetics portfolio with a focus on enhanced promotional activities, improved digital products and services through our ALA platform, sales force expansion, and injector training. We recently announced the FDA approval of SkinVive, the first hyaluronic acid filler in the U.S. for improved skin smoothness of the cheeks, and the recently launched Velux filler for jawline contouring. We remain very confident in the long-term outlook for our aesthetics portfolio and continue to expect to deliver greater than $9 billion in 2029. We have now lapped the beginning of the market downturn, which occurred in the second quarter of last year, and are raising our full-year aesthetics guidance with an expectation for continued operational growth over the back half of the year. Now speaking, Tom Hudson, Senior Vice President, Research and Development and Chief Scientific Officer. We had a very productive first half of the year across all stages and therapeutic areas of our pipeline. In immunology, we received FDA approval for Rinvoke and Crohn's disease, marking its seventh FDA approval across gastroenterology, rheumatology and dermatology. Rinvoke demonstrated a very rapid and strong impact on symptoms as well as endoscopic improvement. We recently began phase 3 studies for Rinvoke in systemic lupus, hydrodenitis, supertiva, and we remain on track to begin phase 3 studies in alopecia areata later this year. In oncology, we received accelerated approval in the U.S. for Akinley as a monotherapy treatment for patients with relapsed or refractory DLBCL who had received two or more systemic therapies. We also recently received positive CHMP opinion with an approval decision in Europe expected later this year. In our SkyRISE program, we announced positive top-line results from our Phase 3 maintenance trial in ulcerative colitis and from a head-to-head trial comparing SkyRISE to Otesla in patients with moderate psoriasis. SkyRISE demonstrated clear superiority to Otesla on all primary and ranked secondary endpoints at weeks 16 and 52, providing very high efficacy, durable responses a safe and tolerable profile, and convenient quarterly administration. In our Navitoclax program, we recently saw top-line results from the Phase 3 Transform 1 trial, evaluating Navitoclax in combination with roxalitinibin for patients with treatment-naive myelofibrosis. This study met the primary endpoint at week 24, demonstrating a statistically significant improvement in the percentage of patients who achieved complete volume reduction of at least 35% compared to RUX plus placebo. We remain on track for several additional data readouts from our late-stage oncology programs, including Phase 3 data from Venclextis Canova trial and relapse-slash-refractory multiple myeloma patients with T114 mutation. In neuroscience, we received a positive CHMP opinion recommending approval of adagepent for migraine prevention. We anticipate a decision in the coming months. And in our aesthetics pipeline, we recently submitted our regulatory application for Botox and Masseter muscle prominence in China. We remain on track to see data from two additional Phase 3 studies later this year with our regulatory submission in the U.S. expected near the end of the year. Now speaking, Scott Reins, Senior Vice President, Chief Financial Officer. AbbVie reported strong second quarter results with adjusted earnings per share of $2.91, which is $0.11 above the guidance midpoint. Total net revenues were nearly $13.9 billion, more than $350 million ahead of guidance and down 4.2% on an operational basis. The adjusted operating margin ratio was 47% of sales. AdVi is raising the midpoint of its full-year adjusted earnings per share guidance by $0.23 and now expects adjusted earnings per share between $10.90 and $11.10. Total net revenues are expected to be approximately $53.4 billion, an increase of $1 billion. This includes high single-digit sales growth from the Exhumira growth platform, Skyrise global sales of approximately $7.6 billion, neuroscience sales of approximately $7.7 billion, and aesthetics global revenue of approximately $5.4 billion. U.S. Humira erosion is anticipated to be approximately 35%. For the third quarter, net revenues are expected to be approximately $13.7 billion, with U.S. Humira erosion of approximately 40%. Adjusted earnings per share are expected to be between $2.80 and $2.90. Guggenheim Partners Analyst Vamil Devan, 
inquired, could you please provide an update on the floor EPS and provide your thoughts on the first list of products to be released on September 1st, particularly in regards to Abvi products and Rinvoke? Rick Gonzalez replied, the meal, the business is performing extremely well and a significant part of the overachievement is coming from our growth platform, which is contributing $1 billion of the $1.4 billion we're raising. We have strong momentum going into 2024 and it's too early to raise the floor, but the performance we're seeing now gives us a tremendous amount of confidence for what 24 looks like. Rob Michael replied, we've raised our revenue guidance by $1.4 billion, driven by strong performance in key therapeutic areas such as Skyrisey, Aesthetics, Neuroscience, and Humira. We feel confident in the fundamentals of the business and anticipate further growth when we provide our Q4 2024 guidance. Rick Gonzalez replied, IRA is a difficult one to predict. We've assumed some products may be impacted early on, with Imbruca being one of them. It's right on the bubble of the first 10 products based on our data. However, we can't be certain that CMS will use the same data, so there's no perfect clarity. We're keeping a close eye on it. Rob Michael replied, IRA was passed a year ago and we modeled the impact. We reaffirmed our long-term guidance of high single-digit growth in the second half of this decade, and we feel confident that even with IRA's impact on the industry, we can still deliver on our expectations. Regarding Medicare, in the U.S., it accounts for about 20% of our business, and globally it's a bit lower. With Rinvoke, when you consider potential indication expansion and selection for negotiation later in the decade, it would account for 10-12% to of sales due to the younger patient population. We have modeled the impact of IRA and don't expect it to affect our development plans for Rinvoke. We anticipate robust growth from Rinvoke and Skyrisey, and collectively these indications could contribute a couple of billion dollars in revenue. J.P. Morgan Chase and company analyst Chris Schott inquired, can you provide more insight into the dynamics of biosimilar Humira, including any surprises you've seen? Also, what is the mix of indications for Skyrise's updated guidance of $7.6 billion? Jeff Stewart replied, Chris, in a nutshell, we've accurately predicted the dynamics of our contracting and access for Humira. We're pleased with how it's played out, as it's been good for patients and provided us with predictability. We've managed the Amgen launch and second half dynamics well. We have two-year agreements with some of our accounts that we expect to be honored. We anticipate Humira access to remain meaningful in 2024, but we are planning for some volume loss in certain wax-sensitive accounts over time. Rob Michael replied, Chris, in terms of our 23 guidance and erosion assumptions, we saw most of the erosion come from price in the first half of the year, with mid-single-digit volume erosion in the second half. For 24, we expect additional price erosion from annualized rebates and increased rebates for parity access, as well as more volume erosion due to mid-year entry of biosimilars. The average of analyst estimates appears to be a reasonable expectation for next year, and we'll provide formal guidance on our Q4 call. Rob Michael replied, yes, Skyrise's sales totaled $200 million, with $100 million each for psoriasis and IBD. Psoriasis accounted for $7.6 billion and IBD for $900 million. Wells Fargo Securities Analyst Mohit Bonsal inquired, can you provide clarity on the EPS floor range of $10.70 for 2023 or 24? Additionally, how do you plan to address investor concerns about the lack of pipeline beyond Skyrisey and Rinvoke? Rick Gonzalez replied, regarding the $10.70, we are highly confident in that figure. We expect to update the floor in an upward direction. Our investment in R&D is designed to deliver top-tier growth over the long term. We anticipate high single-digit growth through the end of this decade and into the early 30s. Our pipeline is strong with assets such as Skyrisey, Rinvoke, Veneto Clax, 951, and a next generation BTK degrader. We have visibility on how these assets are progressing and are confident they will deliver long term growth. Morgan Stanley analyst Terence Flynn inquired Rick, could you provide an update on your M&A BD appetite in the long acting Botox competitor? Are you seeing stable market share? Rick Gonzalez replied, M&A is an area of focus for us, and we are actively looking for assets that can significantly change the standard of care. We evaluate many opportunities, but only pursue those that meet our criteria and can deliver a good return to the business. We have the financial resources to acquire larger assets if needed. Our team, led by Harry, is performing well on Daxi and Kerry can provide more details. Kerry Strong replied, thanks, Rick. The uptake of Daxi has been limited since its launch, tracking to about 25% of where another product would be at the same point in its launch. We've heard customer feedback that expectations are not being met on duration. Despite this, Botox remains the clear market leader and we are pleased with the team's ability to execute competitive strategies and grow the entire toxin market in the U.S. BMO Capital Markets Analyst Evan Segerman inquired, what is the potential ceiling for Skyrisey and Rinvoke in terms of market share? What are the gating factors for market share growth in each of the patient provider or reimbursement agreements? 
Jeff Stewart replied, yes, Evan. It's Jeff. We look at both in-play capture and market share for our products. Skyrisey has an in-play capture of 50% and a market share of 32%. This means that we are capturing one out of every two patients. We expect that as time passes, our market share will increase to match the in-play capture rate due to persistency effects and fall off in the market. Rinvoke has an in-play capture of 25% and a market share of 3%. We are encouraged by the speed of the ramp and the ability to move the market share. We anticipate that the market share will approach the in-play capture rate over our long-range planning cycle. Rick Gonzalez replied, Rick here. Skyrise is not currently competing much against Otesla, which presents a sizable opportunity. We're pleased with the head-to-head -head data, which will open up another pool of patients for Skyrise and allow us to position it effectively against Otesla. Piper Sandler analyst Chris Raymond inquired, Rick, is the plan still to respond to the CRL for ABBV 951 later this year with Dufan in the first half? What updates can you provide on the combo opportunity with GLP-2 and IBD? RuPaul Tucker replied, we are still on track to resubmit 951 this year, and it has already been launched in Japan with commercial patients receiving it. The unmet need is still high and we believe it has a strong profile. In terms of combinations, we feel that Skyrise has the potential to increase endoscopic or mucosal healing even higher than the 50 to 60% range we are already seeing. A GLP-2 could be a potential combo to directly address mucosal healing. We are also considering other assets in our immunology pipeline for a combination. Skyrise's safety profile creates multiple opportunities. Tom Hudson replied, Chris here. We are currently in the process of evaluating data from a Phase 1A study conducted by Caliber, which is part of our immunology program focused on epithelial repair. We anticipate making a decision on this program later this year. Additionally, we have another program called RIP-1 which is also involved in epithelial repair. We believe that combining these strategies with immunomodulators could lead to better outcomes over time. TD Cohen analyst Steve Scala inquired, what is the cause of the weakness in the USGI market, and what has given you the confidence to narrow the EPS range despite biosimilars being on the market for only three weeks? Jeff Stewart replied, Steve, we're not seeing any slowdown in the IBD market. Our data shows that Skyrise and Rinvoke are experiencing fast ramps in patient share, and we're capturing up to 25% of second-line plus patients in ulcerative colitis. Our competitors, Stellara and Antibio, are under pressure in terms of incremental patient capture since our launch. We don't see any patient flow issues in the marketplace. Rob Michael replied, the combination of strong performance from the Exhumira growth platform and the biosimilars entering the market with lower prices has increased our confidence, leading to a guidance raise and narrowing of the range to 20 cents. The Exhumira growth platform is performing well and the biosimilars are facing prices, maintaining strong parity access. Barclays analyst Carter Gould inquired, Rick, how has the FTC's increased assertiveness impacted your target list for BD and your ability to complete deals? How sustainable are the XUS trends for Botox, considering the COVID-related shutdowns? Rick Gonzalez replied, I believe the FTC is taking a closer look at transactions, but even before this, we would always evaluate an acquisition in terms of its competitive environment and our position in that market. We don't pursue transactions that we think will be difficult to get through the FTC. It may take more time and require litigation, but if our position is not anti-competitive, we should be able to prevail. We're seeing this play out in other industries, so I think it will end up being more of a delay than a roadblock. Kerry Strom replied, in terms of the aesthetics market internationally, we've seen strong performance and expect that to continue through the rest of the year. We're investing in key growth markets like Japan and Brazil, and China has become our second biggest market globally. In Q1 and early Q2, we saw significant growth as the market was reopening from COVID and pent-up demand. Now China has returned to normalized high growth rates, and despite some economic pressures, we continue to see strong growth as we invest and expand our promotional footprint there. We anticipate steady product launches throughout the decade in that market. Q3 is expected to be relatively flat internationally due to shipment timing from last year, with return to growth in Q4 and high single-digit growth for the full year. Rob Michael replied, Carter, our international Botox business is performing well. We have a strong market share and force is doing very well. Fillers are a large part of our international business and we expect to see high single-digit growth for the full year. SVB Leering Partners Analyst David Reisinger inquired, Rick, when do you expect Humira sales to stabilize? What are the prospects for the filler franchise, particularly with weight loss drug patients seeking facial hallowing? Rick Gonzalez replied, the Humira tail will see annualization of the impact this year, with further price erosion in 24. We expect to see stabilization of that tail in 25, with low benefit operating similar to what we see in international markets. By 26, we should see less erosion pressure and a substantial tail maintained. Regarding Otesla, Kerry can provide more information. 
Kerry Strom replied, Thanks for the question. The filler market continues to be attractive, especially internationally, with China driving strong growth. We have seen Juvederm brand become available in China in the past few years and we will continue to have a cadence of Juvederm launches there. In the US, inflationary dynamics have impacted the filler market more than toxin, due to pricing and patient journey. We believe the filler market will improve in the second half of the year, although it will lag the toxin market recovery. We are seeing positive tailwinds from products like Ozempic, which get consumers engaged in their appearance and create opportunities for fillers. We are tracking this trend on social media and other forms of media and believe it will continue to be a positive dynamic for the business. Wolf Research Analyst Tim Anderson inquired, What is your expectation for price erosion in 2024 for Skyrise and Rinvo compared to 2023? Rick Gonzalez replied, Jeff and I agree that there has been some confusion in the marketplace regarding one-in-one -one pricing. We have a deep understanding of this market, having been a leader in it for a long time. We do not anticipate any fundamental changes to pricing in the foreseeable future. When we launch a new product, we evaluate the level of rebating needed to maximize the speed of ramp and peak sales. We make a trade-off between contracting and getting on formulary and providing incremental rebates. Skyrise and Rinvoke are examples of this strategy, and they are performing well despite the increased rebates. We expect to grow these two assets to $3.5 billion this year. Jeff Stewart replied, Yes, it's really quite remarkable. We achieved seven indications in one year in one category with one firm, something that is unprecedented. The process of gaining access to a new indication is complex and time-consuming. It requires clearing the payers P&T clinical committee, which meets every couple of months, and then being added to the formulary structure, either by gaining a new spot or replacing a competitor. This is why many competitive firms have to offer free or bridge programs for multiple quarters or years until access ramps up. In contrast, we achieved fully paid access for those seven indications in about 60 days, with very little free goods and almost immediate paid access and profit flow. This rapid revenue accumulation is the right trade-off and is unlikely to be repeated. Rob Michael replied, I want to reiterate that the high single-digit price impact this year is due to seven new indications. We do not anticipate similar price erosion in the future and investors should not be modeling for it. Bank of America Merrill Lynch analyst Jeff Meacham inquired, what is the context of the sequential decline in Osumira sales? Could it impact Skyrise or Rimvoke? What threshold is needed for Navidaclax to move forward or inform development in other indications? Rob Michael replied, Jeff, International Humira's 23 erosion is split into three buckets. About $300 million is from new biosimilar markets such as Canada, Puerto Rico, and Mexico. Another $200 million is due to new agents like Skyrise and Rinvoke, and the remaining $100 million is from low to mid single digit price erosion in international markets. RuPaul Tucker replied, Thanks for the question about Navidaclax. We've been monitoring spleen volume reduction and it looks promising. We'll also be looking at marrow fibrosis and other data that may correlate with survival events. So far, tolerability has been consistent with initial findings and dosing can be tailored to the patient's needs. We expect to have more information by year-end.